The opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the hosts and their guests and may or may not be shared with the staff and management of this network. Go Fleet Broadcasting from the world-famous Haunted Winery here in Warren, Michigan, this is Ghostly Talk on October 18th, 2009. Ghostly Talk is independently produced every Sunday night from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time to converse about all things paranormal. For more info, go to www.ghostlytalk.com. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, change of plans tonight. Yeah, change of plans tonight. We're going to be talking about this change of plans uh, we got FJ in the studio tonight. I Hello. guess uh, yeah, FJ's in the studio. We got Tom on the studio. Yeah, you know. We got Doug on the line. Doug, are you there? I am here. And we got Bonnie uh, on the line also, as you guys already heard. Bonnie, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, guys. Well, that's what's gonna be going on here. We'll just uh, we'll just get into it. God, that was blaring whoever did that. <laughs> Thank you okay, very much. Okay. Was that you, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am in the Ghost Man and Demon Hunter studio, uh, specifically in the Ghost Man uh, part of the studio. And, you know, as part of their show, they have all kinds of gizmos. Oh, and wow. I, I don't know how to work them all, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, and they're not all bought at adult stores either. I was just going to say, no one's showing. I'm not oh, surprised. Here we go. <laughs> let's, uh, hear, well, let's hear another one. Come on, let's show us your wares. I'm trying them all. But Wait, only... they were bought at adult stores and you don't know how to work all of them? I'm oh, scared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to work all of them, but... That's a good girl. I'll stick this right there. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, I don't, I'm pushing... That was the sounds coming from the winery this morning after the Chinese food we ate about 11 o'clock last night. <laughs> and we have... Actual audio. No. Oh, that was the little one. There that was go. a bit more accurate, actually. <laughs> that one sounded a little buttery. Oh, yeah. A little buttery. There's God. one here, though, that has... It's, it's interesting, but I don't know how to work it, so... <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, I've heard here. that before. <laughs> Step one, insert oh, the... Yeah, plug A and the B until yeah. everybody's tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> you know what the funniest thing you mentioned? The, all these weird toys. 
A couple days ago, um, I was fixing one of my neighbors. Uh, I was helping. I'm sorry. I was fixing one of my fixing one of my neighbors. I was, <laughs> was helping. Broker. What? His toys. He was, no, I was at his computer. His computer was busted, so I was helping him out. And um, long story short, I had to run over to his neighbor's house to get something off a computer over there. Right. And I go in his neighbor, his neighbor's place, and I, I'm like, hey, John, sorry to bug you. Where's your computer at? He's like, oh, yeah. shouldn't have said his name. No, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so I, I – Now we know who it is. Yeah, now yeah. we know who it is, right? So I, I run in there, though. He's like, yeah, it's in the bedroom, dude. Go ahead. So I, I run back there, and he's got – I never thought – I never have seen one of these for real. In my, I've only seen them in movies. I mean, porno or non-porno movies, but he actually had one of them hangers from the ceiling. The swing. One of the swing things yeah. from the ceiling, dude, with the holsters and the and the stirrups and all that crap. And I mean, he didn't think anything of it as we walked in. I'm like, I'm like, oh. cue the music. Oh, yeah, I'm like, oh my god! I, I thought I was going to be in there in a second. I didn't know. I, I hope it was for his back, right? He's got a bad back. Well, yeah, he oh, was, yeah, the, the yeah, old bad yeah. back. He yeah. was holding his back. So, <laughs> but he he that, that was the weirdest part though, is because I was like, uh, and I but I tried to like play it off too, and he thought nothing. Oh yeah, come on, it's right here on the kid's computer, dude. No problem at all, you know. Oh, right next to the kid's yeah. computer. <laughs> it's, well, the That's bed's next to the computer. Weird. They queue up the computer, put a movie on or whatever, and then just tight. I I don't know what I have no idea. Right. So how has been? How's Indiana been so far for you two? Let's hear all about this. Um. Well, Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Indiana, follow, this follow up. Follow up that story. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that, <laughs> is that a bad segue? It was a little a little tough there. It's bittersweet. I'm just I'm just gonna give you a little hint, okay? Okay. Doug yesterday spent almost two hundred dollars on Indiana wine. Very nice. Ooh, nice. So really, that that's um, that's not so indicative of this weekend as much as future weekends to come. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be putting good use to those bottles of ale. Yes, uh, yes, those are going to go over very well, especially that's after especially after this show tonight. I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so and, you know, yeah, but, being in Indiana this weekend is is a bit of a celebration. Uh, a bit of a homecoming and a bit of uh, you know, it's 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 friends and 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 not blood related, but uh, family uh, coming together and uh, celebrating, uh, of course, what's going to happen tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Yeah. The the premiere of Extreme Paranormal. So so that's what we're here for. As well as this is the first time I got to see a uh, beautiful Addie. Mm-hmm. Addie is uh, Sean's uh, little baby girl, yeah. who is adorable. And Bonnie, Bonnie has some magic. Um, she really is magic. She can, she can somehow. I've heard that scoop, about her. Yeah. Really, she can scoop Addie up in her arms, and no matter how fidgety or fussy or, or cranky or whatever Addie is, suddenly she just falls right asleep. It's, it's as if Bonnie knows where the off button is or something, or the relax. That's, that's not the magic story I heard. Bonnie <laughs> knows where the on button is. Well, actually, I've got I've got more than one skill. Just so you know. <laughs> that's that's what the uh, rumor had it. Mm-hmm. See where yep, yep. Yep. is always here. So okay, <laughs> well, I'm not going to try to segue off of that. I just screwed up a segue big time. So so you're Wait, enjoying let yourself. See, let me see if there's a gizmo for that. Oh, no, here. Let's see. Let's try something. <laughs> Speaking, speaking, of, speaking of irritating noises, this is ghostly talk. How's that? How was that? Was that good? All right, bingo. Boom! I nailed it, huh? All right. <laughs> yeah, two hundred dollars in wine, and then he's going to spend two hundred dollars in toys to bring home from India. Yeah. <laughs> A uh, couple of things we got. Well, okay. Uh, so you guys are obviously having a great time out there. Uh, the wine, uh, you've cleared out the wine stock down there, which is really good. Bring it here to Michigan where it belongs, Doug. I agree. That's a fantastic yeah. job. Uh, I've got like, my phone's ringing. Oop. How's <laughs> <laughs> that? We have like rule number 36 yeah. of radio <laughs> etiquette here. This is We're the, breaking them all tonight. Why not? <laughs> this is, you know, this is the... This is the night to break all the rules. Yes, it is. So, yes, it, so. yeah, yes, it is. A uh, couple things. i uh, got to get out there here, a couple of administrative things. And plus, I have a really interesting story we have to tell here, too. We'll be getting to that here in a few minutes. Uh, uh, we were at the Michigan Paranormal Conference yesterday, the Michigan Ghost Watchers Conference. Uh, first off, i got to thank Cindy Blake 100,000 times over for having us out there again. Cindy, uh, 
has been uh, been the founder and president of the Michigan Ghost Watchers, probably for longer than some of us out here have been alive. She has been doing this stuff for a very long time, and we're we are completely honored and humbled to come out there and spend time with her out there at the conference. It was a really good time. Got to see all the, you know a lot of cool people hang out. Had a really really fun time listening to the speakers. I mean, it was just a good time all around. Tom, you were there also. Yep. You enjoy yourself. I there? definitely enjoyed it. Yep. Got to see a lot of old friends there and uh, catch up on things and. Mm-hmm. Always learn something every yep, time. Yeah, it was a really good time. So we have to thank Cindy for uh, for inviting us out there and letting us hang out and all that good stuff. Uh, are you are you going to start the hundred thousand thank yous right after the show? Yeah, and, and, and we're going to go week. try to go to the end of the week. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I think we'll make it. I, I don't depending on. Keep the coffee going, I guess. No cigarettes, though. That, that's the last thing you need. Uh, so thanks, for thanks, Cindy. We always love coming out there and, you know, hope to be – we'll be seeing – it would be nice to see Cindy other than a conference because she's so cool. Uh, so maybe, Cindy, we can see you sometime outside of a conference. Uh, another thing i got to throw out there, too um, – Getting all the audio cut from the Ohio conference that we were at back in uh, August. Yeah, it's been a while. Sorry, guys. Uh, getting all the audio from that, um, the Mothman Festival also, and also the Chicago Ghost Conference. Um, the Ohio conference audio is up on the site for the speaker. You can download those. Go nuts. They're in the current archives. Feel free to take those. Uh, take them as you please. I know I have the Mothman Festival stuff all done. But I have to do the usual administrative stuff before I post it up on the website. So give us a little bit of time on that. And the Chicago stuff, we'll be getting that chopped up this week, hopefully. We'll be getting that up on the website for you guys also out there. So just be patient. It's been kind of a crazy couple weeks here. But it's being worked on, and we're going to have that up there for you, for you guys as soon as possible. Uh, yeah. So, oh, here's another thing. Doug, did you hear about this also? I don't know if you, Bonnie or Doug, Captain Lou Albano died this week. Yeah. Oh, my. Shut up. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, Captain Lou Albano passed away this week. I mean, I'm going to... Oh, Captain Lou Albano died. Uh, I'm telling Sean. Okay, all right. Um, that would be uh, Cindy Lauper's best friend. Uh, he he was a... Um, he was in the... Uh, well, our manager, and, and he would also be a, a wrestler. Well, yeah, right? okay, yeah. Uh, when, uh, let's see... I got a little thing right here, as a matter of fact. When Captain Lou Albano entered the... Ra- what? Okay, yeah, nice. That, that isn't me. Shut up. You know who that is? That's our friend Randy. We're looking at a picture here. Uh, when Captain Lou Albano entered the ranks of professional wrestlers in 1953, their sport ranked somewhere above pornography and below <laughs> football, betting cards, and cultural respectability. When he departed more than three decades later, professional wrestling was a global phenomenon attracting viewers on closed-circuit TV pay-per-views, MTV, and Saturday morning cartoons. Um, yeah, Captain Lou Albano, I grew up with that guy with the rubber bands hanging out of his face and all that goofy stuff. He got stuff. that from me. He got that? Yeah, he <laughs> did get that from you. Didn't yeah. He stole that from you, FJ. Uh, but he was just awesome. I remember every Saturday watching wrestling with Captain Lou Albano up there. I forgot who he was the manager of, though. I totally... My, my grandma would get so fired up about those wrestling matches. It was ridiculous. My grandma was all 83 pounds soaking wet and was just full of... Uh, you, you know can what? say pee and vinegar. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. Pee and vinegar. And, and over, over, yeah, over watching these shows because she swore up and down it was so real. Oh yeah, and yeah. Well, when you, th- that was kind of like when I, I know when I was a young, very young, um, and I was told that wrestling was fake. That was the equivalent of being told that Santa Claus doesn't exist, the Easter Bunny doesn't exist. It's like, dude, no, this, no, it's he real, doesn't? man. It's real. It doesn't. <laughs> okay. The two time we got to level with you on this oh, one, man. man. Yeah, listen, dude. Uh, when a guy and a girl meet each other, <laughs> and they like each other, the Easter Bunny comes, right? Yeah, the Easter Bunny comes and gives them a baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're, we're wow. Right. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, see, you learn something every day. That's what I tell my daughters every day. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're like my age, too. Yes, older. Still, you tell them that every yeah, day. Yeah. I don't blame you. Because that's why I don't have a daughter. Because, well, I tell her that in the little peephole in the closet that I'd have her locked in, so she'd understand fully. Yeah, no, I gave my daughter a car so she would just not be in the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got, and here's another one I got to throw out here. This, this is, and you haven't heard this one yet, mm-hmm. Jay. No. This is, and Doug, you've heard this one. You heard this in great deal detail. But I got the permission from the parties involved to tell this story on the air. Uh, And I have to, because this is just creepy. This is just so strange. Um, 
people out there listening to the show, whether you're listening in archive format, if you're listening live right now, you may have heard us uh, a couple of months ago when we were coming back from Canada, the Can-Am Paranormal Conference out there. The last day we were coming back, we we dealt with... Well, we got we got pulled over at the border there, and they had to go through our stuff, right? The things dreams are made of. That's one of them right there. And um, did they give you the full inspection? Oh yeah, it was great. We, we, <laughs> you we, liked it too, didn't you? Big beaming <laughs> smiles on our faces. We were just so happy. No, in all seriousness, we were lucky. We didn't have that done. Now, one of the people we met in this little adventure was when we pulled the car up to the the, the, the parking spot. This gentleman was one of the guard border guys there was there, and and he was like, you know, hey, uh, you know, where are you guys all from? And I'm like, I'm from Warren. And Doug was like, well, I'm from Chesterfield. And Amber's like, well, I'm from Grand Haven. And, she's like, and he's like, Grand Haven, what are you doing all the way over here? So they got into this little mini conversation to which I'm thinking, okay, he knows where she's from. And he, we might get a break, which, of course, we didn't. But it, within this conversation, you know, they found out, you know, they basically live like streets apart from each other. And they know, like, they know the same neighbors and all this stuff. And he was a very nice guy. He was very cool. Uh so, okay, great. And, we, and he actually was really nice. He didn't, like, tear the trunk up or anything like that. He was really cool. And they searched the car, but it wasn't nearly as um, intrusive as I thought it was going to be. They didn't find the hidden compartment. Though. They didn't find okay. it. And we've got to get Amber. Where's it? Is Amber out there? Yeah. Amber! <laughs> get in here! Hang on. We're going to get... we, we got to... I can't tell this... We gotta get details on this thing, you know, as far as the the situation. I, I'll introduce it and then you flesh it out. How's that sound? Well, I just finished the part with the border, with where we're on the border, right? Yeah, here, step in there. You can sit on Tom's lap if you want. There you go. You sit on Tom. It's actually on Tom's lap. <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> that was Tom. That wasn't the toy. <laughs> wow, Tom. So okay. <laughs> so let's, let's fast forward, um, what, about two months, something like that? This was like about a week and a half ago, right? Mm-hmm. Tell us what happened. Tell us what happened at the library. It was last week. Was it last week? Yeah. Okay. All right. No, I'm working. It's a normal night. I'm the only one there. Usually I have backup, but I didn't that night. And I work at a library. So we get a lot of weird, strange, evil, mean people. Mm-hmm. And this guy walks up and he tells me, oh, um, there's a book that's checked out on my account. And it's, I saw it on the I saw it on the book or the shelf. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so logical. Most people are pretty polite about this, and you tell them, "Well, if it's on your account, do you mind going back over there and pulling it off?" Most normal people would also. They bring, do the same thing in my library. They would bring, I don't care. Well, they would bring the book to you and say, "This is on my account." <laughs> so the guy tells me that, and I go, "Oh, would you mind running over there and picking it up?" Yeah. So we can get it off your account. And he goes, all of a sudden, demeanor changes, and he gets creepy. I shouldn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, great, one of these. So, anyway, then, am I crushing you, Tom? Yes. But That's part right. of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you right. should see the smile on his face. It is priceless. Yeah, do your creepy I'm voice actually right probably now. crushing him. <laughs> but, um, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. So, yeah. anyway, the guy continues on saying that this shouldn't be happening in this new system. Well, we have a new building, not a new system. We still check the books out the same way. Mm-hmm. And, um. By this point, that he keeps mumbling his crap, whatever, and then he proceeds to flash me a badge. I'm at work, so of course I can't say, "Did you get that at Toys R Us? Where's your cap gun?" <laughs> yeah. Well, what did he say when he flashed the badge? He goes. Though? He said, "By this time, I'm flustered, so I'm, I've already blocked him out." But he said something to the effect of, "Well, uh, you know, in my business, we resolve these issues." And, <coughs> and then yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he flaps open his you know cheap jacket and shows me some little toy on it clipped onto his belt. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, right off. This guy, I'm done with this guy. So I tell him, you know, there's a lot of variables in a library. Move on, you know. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. I make an incident report because the guy was extremely unsettling, and we have to do this at a library in case the guy ever gives acts up in the future and you got to report him. So I just write it out. My director reads it the next morning, and she says, well, you know, if it's, if it's a local cop, they, they can't be flashing their badge like that. Oh, yeah. So she sends the no image. No cop can do that. No. So they, we have an image of the guy flashing me, and uh, we send <laughs> it. Which is, is <laughs> yeah. and, uh, That's hot. Oh, wait. <laughs> that was Tom. Oh. <laughs> so, you might want to rephrase that a little well, bit before you get well, pounced whatever, out again. Not nudity-wise. Yeah. He's flashing his ego or yeah. lack of. Yeah. So anyway, um, my boss actually goes on Facebook and comes up to me and says, this is why my Facebook's closed. She's like, this guy works at a pizza place, and the rest of the time he works in Port Huron at Border Patrol. 
<laughs> so I'm like, oh, so he's a border guy, you know. Okay, they got egos and problems and whatever. Yeah. And uh, so then it dawns on me a little while later because the guy had told me. Well, you must have told the story about the the border. I already told that one. Yeah. By me, okay. Yeah, yeah, I told. So that then party. all of a sudden it dawns on me, and I ask a coworker, I'm like, where's this road at? And she goes, oh, it's off this such and such road. And I'm like, <gasps> it was him. Talker. And well, he has no—he has no idea who I was. I was just some little, you know, moron that wasn't, you know, catering to him at the library. But full circle, it was the border patrol guy that searched our car and got all geek because I knew his friends who were my neighbors. Yada yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we talked about yeah. that. So that's the creepy part, though, is it was the same dude. Yeah. So completely clear across the. And street. we actually have, and I don't know if we want, we want to take it this far, but we yeah, actually I'm have a. Post yeah, we. I was gonna say let's scan this sucker and put it on the website. Well, well, because <laughs> you know, if you bit. look, if you look close, yeah, he looks a little bit. He looks like a, like a, like a fatter Ed Norton. Uh, you know what? I I you think, can see the Ed Norton and I like think, the skinhead version of Ed Norton. Remember from American History X. Ed Norton mixed with Al Bundy. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, Ed Norton mixed with Al Bundy. And, that, yeah, it's a and the picture is great. I mean, they, this is actually from the security camera. And, I mean, he's holding his badge. When you see, you can't see Amber. You just see the back of Amber's head. But you can just, no. <laughs> so did Tom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who doesn't have a picture like that, really? <laughs> I got to start doing drops. I love too. you, Amber. <laughs> She don't have any headphones so, on. So she missed that whole thing. So she, she missed That's that. That's probably a good thing. But no, anyways. But yeah, Amber's just standing there with her hands on the desk, just kind of like. And I know the look on her face is like, just go away, just just go away. You're a loser. But he, oh, you've seen that look before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Pisces. All right. Nice. Are we done? Are we, this rip fest will not end here. My God. So yeah, I had to. This was just hysterical. I mean, this is just a bleeding example of of a horribly well inflated ego. Uh, well, in my business, this is what we do. In my business, yeah, that's the pizza that's business, awesome. yeah, dude. Yeah, the, you know? the, yeah, the, yeah. Why don't you just yeah? Why don't you show them your car or the sign on your car? Well, in my business, you walk outside and point at the, the the sign on your car. Well, we take care of business. We get that pizza there in twenty minutes or less, and you get it for free. You hear me, bitch? That's my business. That's how we run our business. Yeah, that's how we roll, yo. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you for real? This is this is for real. Beautiful. So I'm keeping this. This is another one of the things I keep, much like the male Nazi from years ago. Remember the male Nazi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remember that? Yes, These I do. These are the things that I keep and put on my pegboard. Whenever I'm having a bad day, I look at my pegboard and go, there's always somebody out there having a worse day than me. Absolutely. And this and is one of those things that's going on the pegboard. feel so much better about yourself. I feel great. Yeah, I feel fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so... Yeah, okay, so that had to get put out into the beautiful whatever airwaves things there. Um, Just don't cross the border anytime soon. Oh, I'm not going. <laughs> I said, Doug, you, you can attest to this, man. That when we come over that border, I'm like, I am never going to Canada ever, ever, ever again. Am I correct? Right. And it's, yes, you did. And it's not Canada's fault. It's the border guard patrol people coming back into the U.S. Yeah, no, this wasn't Terrible. Canada. Yeah, this wasn't. This was going into our own country, like we said. <laughs> like you're a citizen of the U.S. and it's the U.S. Border Patrol. Yeah. That is uh, that is so domineering that you just don't want to have to deal with it again. Yeah, and that cost Canada money, in my opinion. And, I don't want to go. Yeah, and that's how, why they got the egos that they can take to the pizza business with them. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't forget to tip them. I'm sorry, sir. It was 21 minutes. Oh, you'll take it anyways. You understand me. I am part of the Border Patrol also. That's the guy talks. <laughs> I need to get this book on the library. No. I'm from the Border Patrol. Yeah. Apparently, he's a former wrestler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Captain, <laughs> Captain Lou is already reincarnated. Yeah, you see, yeah. Lou Albano is in the winery as we speak right now. He's here, he's alive, people. He'll live on forever in our hearts. So, you know, rest in peace, Captain Lou Albano, though. That's a real bummer. And many, many, many of, of Saturday afternoons, mornings, or during the week, I spent watching that nutbag with rubber bands hanging out of his head. Just, just, just go out, and it looked like he was ready to have a heart attack anytime. Yeah, and he was in the Sydney Lava video, also, Doug. You're right, he was in yes, that video. Yes, he was. Too. He was. Which was a great. What, t what tune was that? I forgot that song now. Girls, Girls just want to have fun. Oh, what a cool song! How could you forget that song? Uh, 
<laughs> to be the loser in the Black Sabbath. Oh, oh, come on. Secretly, you had everything yeah, I, I put on my leotard <laughs> and my, my leg warmers and oh, God. danced around the room. Absolutely. I had the hidden cassette tape That's or the right. hidden yeah, the, the hidden record put away, <laughs> and all my metal buddies left. I just danced around the room while it's all over the place. Yeah, that, yeah totally. I if am I, not going to sleep good tonight. Yeah, I know you're not. Of my mind. No, the, the thought of Scott. Kirk Scott. Is How'd that hook go? Kirk <laughs> is I have fun. Uh, uh, yeah, Doug, come on. Hook it. <laughs> Yeah, no. the image of Scott L. frolicking right there. I'm I'm done. I'm out. Check, please. You couldn't I'm see gone. me frolicking like in Peanuts when they did the do 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 do. You see, like just I like, was pretty much done when he said leotard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for bringing that image to my head. Yeah, I, I, I literally leotard and leg warmers. I threw up in my mouth at that moment. <laughs> wow. Well, on that note, we're going to take a break, I think. Let's let's take a little, like a couple minutes of an early break here, because when we come back, we got some stuff we're going to be discussing with you guys. But I think, are you guys cool on the other end? You guys want to take a quick break here for a minute? Sounds good. Yeah, that'll give me time to stoke the fire. <laughs> of, of Scott L. in the leotard. What do you think? Well, no, I mean literally stoke a fire because I'm outside. There's like really a fire in a fire pit. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. They are in Indiana after yes, all. Yeah, time. Indiana's completely different than Detroit. Now, in Detroit, that fire would be the crack house next door. That would be that, would, that fire would be part of a building. <laughs> exactly. That would be now, somebody's in, property. Or, in or Indiana, big... they have little fire pits, and they do little fires, and you can roast marshmallows or let the dog's tail. Off the dog's one. tail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was Exciting. Nice. All right, we're taking a break. This is Ghostly Talk. I am Scott L. And I'm Doug. FJ. And I'm Bonnie. And I'm Tom. We'll be right back after this. Ghostly Talk! The Darker Side of the Moon is an alternative talk variety show. DarkerSideRadio.com since 2006, host Becky Ray and Laura Moon speak with independent filmmakers, authors, musicians, artists, and many, many more. DarkerSideRadio.com Sometimes serious, mostly fun, the show has a little for everyone. Was it odd, freaky, and you didn't hear it on the 5 o'clock news? Then we'll probably cover it here. DarkerSideRadio.com Darker Side currently airs live Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 7 p.m. Central and 5 p.m. Pacific. DarkerSideRadio.com If you happen to miss it, you can listen to show archives at any time online at DarkerSideRadio.com or you may subscribe to the show on iTunes. DarkerSideRadio.com This is an EVP. This is an EVP. These were recorded by the Long Island Ghost Hunting Team. Light. To hear more, come listen to Light Paranormal Radio. Go to lightparanormal.com and subscribe to us in iTunes. No, I heard a woman's voice. You heard a woman's voice? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, like, hello. Oh, yeah. 
Shadow governments, strange rituals, new world Shadow orders, governments, strange buried rituals, treasures, new planetary mind control, military cover-up, shadow governments, strange rituals, new world orders, buried treasures, planetary mind control, military cover-up, out there. Out there. Out there. Out there. Out there. Out there. It's a strange world. Visit outthereradio.net for more information. Okay, we had a lot of fun that last half an hour, Absolutely. and now we're going to talk about this. Mm-hmm. Doug, do you want me to lead off, or do you want to lead off? You better lead off, because I don't know if I can. Okay, all right, well, uh, let's see how we're going to do this. Well, first up, I'd like to say, the first thing I want to say to Doug and Bonnie is, I, I'm sorry this has to happen on your vacation. Okay, I, I thought about that today, and I'm like, oh, man, you know, I, I could have picked a better time to, you know, do this, you know, but you guys are on your trip, and I apologize about that, so I'm very, very sorry, okay? It's no okay. apology. No apology necessary. All right, um, and I also want to say thank you to Tom and uh, FJ for being here and hanging out, and, and this is quite a change from what you thought you were walking into here. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I even studied. Yeah, I know. That, that, that was, that, I didn't tell you that, Doug. I'm talking to FJ. He's like, yeah, I read up on all the guests. I'm ready to go here. I'm like, yeah, you're doing more work than we're doing. Right? <laughs> so, okay, so let, let, let's, just do, let's get right to the chase here. Basically, what we're going to be doing with the show here um, – Doug and I had a long talk, and in turn, Doug had a long talk with Bonnie about this. And we've all agreed that um, we're going to be taking a bit of a high, uh, you know, and I say a bit of a hiatus from this show. Now, I'll make it very clear here on a couple of points. We are, we're taking a hiatus. We don't know how long it's going to be. I hate to use the term indefinite, 
It's like we're going on an indefinite hiatus from the rock stardom that is ghostly talk. Um, no, we're taking a, a hiatus. We don't really know at this point how long it's going to be. So it could be indefinite. <laughs> Shut your hole. <laughs> you ruined, <laughs> you ruined the drama. You got a point. <laughs> okay, fine. We're going on a goddamn indefinite hiatus. All right. All right. We're going on hiatus though from the show here, um, and we're, I'm sure in the in the in the in the future here as we go along, you're gonna, we're going we're gonna to explain everything out to you. I think one of the most important things of Ghostly Talk, and one of the things I'm most proud of, and I know Doug and Bonnie are very proud of with this show, is that we've always maintained a very very high uh, high display of transparency between us. Uh, the host of this little show, and you guys, the listeners of this show. We've always been, I, I, I know we've always been very upfront about things, and that's why we're doing what we're doing here tonight on the show. We're, 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 t- we're going to tell you guys everything, what's going on here, how we feel, and what's going to be happening with the show. Um, we're going on a hiatus now, I, and, I, and, I, and I've said this already today. Uh, hiatus, yeah, I know there's a lot of people or things or shows or whatever form of art it may be, um, they say, well, we're going to go on a hiatus, and then you never hear from them ever again. That is not the case with Ghostly Talk. I personally and Doug, I can speak for Doug and Bonnie, we're, we are not gone. Ghostly Talk is not dead. It will never be dead. As a matter of fact, you know, we've already got ideas of, for the future and things we're going to be doing here. But at this point right now, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I know I'm going to be putting my opinion in on this thing, and Doug's going to do his thing, and Bonnie's going to do her thing also. At this point, I know that we need to take a break from this thing. We've done close to eight years now with this show, um, and it's a, and it's incarnation of what it is. And we've grown. We've done – there's been – I and we'll get into all the great things that we still get today out of Ghostly Talk. But um, as it is right now, we all agreed – that we need to take a hiatus from this thing and take a break from it. There's things that we have to do, and it's very tough to do this. I, it goes without saying. It's very tough to to come here and talk about this thing. But um, I think it's really important, I know Doug and Bonnie think that also, that we let you guys know as the people that have been supporting the show and sending the kind emails or coming up to us at conferences or whatever and shaking our hands and saying, you know, like the show, that I've been listening for X amount of years. Uh, we think it's very important that you guys get treated with the utmost respect that you deserve, and that's why we're doing what we're doing tonight, and we're discussing this thing live on, well, live right now, but you'll maybe hear it on your iPod or whatever. You're going to hear it as soon as we put it up, right? So that's the high level of this thing. Ghostly Talk is going on a hiatus for a while. We don't know how long. And we don't, you know, we don't know when we'll be coming back with this thing. We don't know what's going to happen here. You know, and that's, that's the whole point of this whole thing. And, and, and I hope you people are, have gotten the point that this thing has become more, as far as, far as this thing called ghostly talk, um, has become more than just a paranormal talk show. Um, this is a representation of independent media, an independent media period. And... One of the big things with independent media is you can do what you want with it, right? And if you need to take a break from it, you can do that. We never signed any contracts with anybody. We've never given anybody control of this show. We've done everything on our own from the very beginning, bottom line. And if you've heard us talk about independent media, you know exactly where we're coming from. And that's that we're going to do this our way, and that's the only way it's going to be done. So um, that's why we're doing what we're doing right now. And we hope that you guys are cool with that. And, well, frankly, if you're not, well, deal with it. <laughs> There's nothing you can, you know, it's our show. So we're going to do what we want to do with it. And we feel that we need to step back from this thing for a little while uh, and retool things and get things the way we want them to be done here. Well, like you said, you've got new ideas coming up, things in the works down the road. Yeah. Whenever that, whenever that may or may not be. But eight years of of regular shows, that is a long time. That's easy to see where burnout could come in. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. And yeah. you, to take a break and come back with uh, fresh eyes and ears. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't thing. stress this enough to you people out there, whether you're in the chat room or whatever right now. You guys need to understand ghostly talk is not dead. It's the farthest thing from dead. This is what happens when you grow. This is what happens when you're trying to do something. And, and like Doug said, and I'm, I'm turning the floor over to Doug here in about two seconds. Like Doug said to me on the phone today, he's like, sometimes you need to make a step back in order to make two steps forward, which is absolutely brilliant. That's what it's all about, and that's what you need to do. We're not quitting. We're not going to quit. 
There's too many people out there that want us to quit. <laughs> and it's more fun to stick that in their face a little bit and say, no, we're not done yet. We're just doing whatever the hell we want to do because we have the power to do that. Nobody owns Ghostly Talk. Nobody owns Doug or myself or Bonnie. Nobody owns anything here. We own this thing, and we have the power to make these choices on our own. And I'm very proud of that, that we've been able to do that and maintain that for close to eight years now. Doug, I'm shutting my hole for a few minutes. The floor is yours. In order to come to this decision, uh, well, it was very sudden, actually, but um, uh, I, I think it's necessary. I think it, it, it's been quite a ride, almost eight years of, of pretty much every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first on Tuesdays and then on Sundays. And, and it's, it's a huge part of, of my life. And with this show, I've gained um, a perspective on many things, not just the paranormal. The paranormal was a bonus, um, but on friendship mm-hmm. and on, um, you know, relationships and friendship and, uh, and, and producing a, a piece of art, a piece of work, uh, an actual product that you can, you can turn to and say, look, I, I did this. I had help, yeah, but I did it. I mean, this is an accomplishment of yeah. mine and of Scott's and of Bonnie's mm-hmm. and of many, many, many people. Mm-hmm. And in order to produce that, uh, there was a lot of a lot of <laughs> heart, uh, soul, uh, sweat, um, time. Just everything goes into that. And I've learned uh, a lot of self-respect out of that oh, yeah. because. You know, pre, I, I was telling Scott earlier on the phone during our marathon conversation that <laughs> it <laughs> that it was um, you know up until Ghostly Talk, I I had had how many hobbies, right? How many interests, and nothing really stuck. I, I didn't stick to much of anything. I, I would you know a couple months or whatever, and then I'd be on to something new, something yeah. else to grab my interest. Well, the paranormal. Um, Grabbed my. It has always been an interest of mine, and uh, I, I wasn't giving it all that much time. I mean, I'd be interested. I'd read something in the paper about it, or a magazine article, or yeah. uh, or online, or talk to somebody about ghosts, or or what have you. But then yeah. it, it sort of took over, and uh, and then when Ghostly Talk developed out of that, uh, it, it it really you know, grew. It really took root and uh, sprouted from there, and yeah. it's become a huge part of my life, and, and I'm forever thankful for that, um, the, you know, the, that I met, you know, you, Scott, and Bonnie, and uh, a host of people. I, I can't even begin to start listing all the people, but I, I, I do want to mention uh, especially, you know, Sean Burris. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Whose, whose house we're at right now, whose interest in the paranormal um, was, was um, it was, uh, you know, the ghostly talk. He, he would sit up at night and, and you know, after work because he had weird, uh, he has weird hours at work. And after work, he would, he would sit and listen to archives of ghostly talk at night. And that's what, you know, brought him to contacting us the first time. Was was that he would he would listen to ghostly talk and he'd be like oh the things you guys talk about you know and out of that out of just that came not only the you know the his interest in the paranormal and the IGT thing and yeah. and then of course Ghost Man and Demon Hunter show and now uh, and now the show on A and E I mean it, it just it the what the the things that ghostly ghostly talk I guess has been fertilizer for a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and by fertilizer I mean sometimes it is cow manure and sometimes yeah, I, more than <laughs> more often than not. <laughs> yes, but, but sometimes it's um you know sometimes it's been the the nitrogen or whatever they put in in fertilizer to make things grow fast and strong and yeah you can tell he's in Indiana because that's how he knew this <laughs> <yeah>. information. <laughs> 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 and I'm telling you, it, it was um, a big part of my life, and I and I hope that the the, the seeds of of what what Ghostly Talk has been uh, is is going to uh, grow into uh, in many people's lives into bigger and better things and things that just absolutely uh, can you know make people think and talk and believe and. 
uh, argue and everything everything that we've done for oh, all yeah. these years and and make make everybody stronger and better for it. I know I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I agree with you on all that stuff, Doug. I mean, this is big. It's again, it's it isn't just about the paranormal anymore. When we're, as far as doing ghostly talks concerned, there's been a lot of stuff we've gotten out of this, and you know, we're going to cover a lot more stuff here. This isn't just going to be hey, see you later, later, <laughs> later, see you, see you later. No, um, Doug, uh, can I turn the floor over to Bonnie for a few minutes? Is that cool? I love that plan. All right, Bonnie, uh, the floor is yours with your Indiana wine, fire, and cigarettes at your side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that new Yankee wow. candle smell we got going. That's gonna be great. Yeah, sorry, buddy. This could this could lead anywhere with Indiana wine, fire, and cigarettes. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could it, it could be a lot worse than my normal conversations on ghostly talk, which are usually filth and filth. Um, but <laughs> well, it's true. So for me, for the most part, I mean. Ghostly Talk to me started out as a stalking hobby because I was stalking you guys. <laughs> yeah. And you couldn't get you couldn't get rid of me, which in truth is why I finally wound up in front of a microphone. But um I, for me it's always been about the friendship because yeah. Okay, we're gonna get deep here for a minute. But it's okay. it's when I became tonight, so, yeah. when I became friends with you and Doug Mm-hmm. It was probably one of the worst times in my life. Mm-hmm. Probably. That I believe. I agree. I work a couple yeah. of <laughs> same, same thing happened to me. As soon as I met Scott, it was the worst time in my life. It was all day. downhill from there. You were wasted every weekend, FJ. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Bonnie. I mean, I was going through one of the worst times of my life when I met you guys. And you guys, um, oh, let's God. see. You took me out and I started having fun and enjoying life again, which was something I hadn't done for about 10 years. So for that, I will always be grateful to you guys. Thank you very much. But mm-hmm. it's it's always been about the friendships for me because, well, now the only time I talk to Doug is Sunday during Ghost of Talk. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the only time I talk to Scott is Sunday during Ghostly Talk or yeah. when he has a phone call about ghostly talk Isn't that or enough? about a conference i'm cool with that. so Bitch. for me it was it was always about you yeah. guys because yeah. you guys brought me out of the pits of hell mm-hmm. and made i started enjoying life again so you guys are like my little shining light which is probably the nicest thing i'll ever say about you yeah for and it's a good thing you have an archive yes we have it's a good thing yeah it's my, a good thing it'll be our time. I'm going up in my mouth again. Yeah, I'm throwing. <laughs> Maybe I've had too much Indiana wine. But <laughs> no, no. And all, um, no, this is what we're here to do tonight. And, and, and you say what you got to say about and, this. And, you know and in, in all serious, it, for me, it was it was about you guys and spending time with you guys and laughing and joking and having fun with you guys and traveling with you guys. And then it became about the other people we met as a result of the show. Sean and Gowan and Tom and Amber and everyone else that just created our large dysfunctional family that we now have. Yeah, we do. Yeah, to right. me, that that's what Ghostly Talk has been about. Ghostly Talk has formed a second family for me. And that's something that's never going to die, even when Ghostly Talk does, 400 yeah. years from now. Yeah. <laughs> my... my <laughs> My second family will always be there, and I am completely grateful to you and Doug and Ghostly Talk for creating that for me, because you guys, whether I told you then or not, really just brought me out of the pits of hell. You really did. Well, thank you, Bonnie. That, and in all seriousness, that, that means a lot to hear, so thank you. Uh, I, that's for me, at least. Um, but I want to make it clear again, though, with this, I mean, there's there's some pretty deep conversation going on here, obviously, um, but ghostly talk isn't dead. We're just taking a break here, okay? But this has been, I, I but I know granted the situation, and uh, Doug and I have talked, and I know Bonnie, you and Doug talked, and I know this is a very emotional thing for us. When you put, you know, almost a decade into something, um, and then you say, look, I'm putting the brakes on it, and you and you knock yourself off your your kilter. It's going to be an emotional thing regardless. For us, this is, I know for me at least, this is like the equivalent of, 
you know, you know, if it was if Amber and I were to say, look, we're taking a break from each other. I mean, that would just totally mind bleep me. That would totally screw my head up. It's the exact same thing. If we both said, hey, we're taking a break from each other, um, that would just totally destroy me, you know, for for a long time. Even if it was, but I, you know, I, you know, that that's not going to happen because we're stuck together. <laughs> but, but like, you know, but this is the same thing. That know. super glue was a bad idea. Well, yeah, the roofies only last for so long, right? So, it builds up a tolerance. Yeah, yeah she builds up a yeah. tolerance, and you know, then you got to use charm. Yeah. Piss on that. I mean, it's so fun. So, but no, I mean, we're not done. I want to be clear about this, but, but I again, from what I said at the very beginning of this conversation. We're keeping this as transparent as possible here, and we're going to keep you guys informed on everything we're doing, too, as far as the show's concerned, right? Um, I know for me, I guess I'll take over here for a second. I know for me, it goes without saying, this has been an all-encompassing thing in my life for a number of years. When we were speaking, when I was speaking at the the Michigan conference yesterday, I had a little little trip I did, um, and... You know, one of the things I said was this is, you know, Ghostly Talk is the number one thing in my life. This is the thing I'm most proud of. All the bands I've played in, all the goofy crap I've done, all the creations I've I've done over the years, things I've done, whatever it may be, Ghostly Talk will never be touched as far as something that I'm proud of um, and that I, you know, as far as a feather in my cap's concerned, Ghostly Talk is number one. I'm, it's the thing I'm most proud of, and that's why, you know, I think if it was anything else, I'd have, I, I would have came to Doug and said, I'm done. I'm done. I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. But I said, no, this is too special, and we, we're doing something too cool here, I think. It needs to be retooled. It needs to be thought through so we can come back to this thing and go, yeah, you know what? This is now. This is what it's supposed to be. Um, and that's why we're doing what we're doing here, I think. Or, you know, I, at least I, I know I asked, you know, if this, you know, if we could do this thing like this, and Doug and Bonnie graciously said, "Yeah, let's 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 try this and see what happens." So, um, you know, but I, it goes without saying, Doug and Bonnie are two of my dearest friends too, and I can tell you guys that here on the air. I can tell anybody that uh, it's a brother and sister me right there. Uh, they, uh, Doug's obviously Doug. You've uh, you've done way more for me than just help me out on this show and do and work with me on this show. Uh, we've we've had some pretty cool adventures career-wise now too, uh, so I I'm, I've always and I've told you that over and over again. I'm forever grateful for the help you've given me for that. Uh, that's not ghostly talk related, but it ties in because this is like Bonnie just said a, a minute ago. This is a lot more than just a, a couple of people getting together hoping to get picked up by CBS. All right, it's never been about that. And we'll get more into that in a few minutes, too, I think. But this has been about uh, a group of friends here that get together and do a show on their own with their own rules, how they want to do it. And when you, when, you, when you get in the trenches on something like that, um, you develop some pretty, really, really, really good friendships. And that's what we've done with Ghostly Talk. Doug and Bonnie are both uh, two of my dearest friends, obviously, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. And that's why we're doing what we're doing here. And there's no drama here either. <laughs> that has to be mentioned, guys. No, nobody hates each other. We're all very cool. I think that's pretty obvious right now. We're having an awful good time talking about something very difficult right now. We're having a good time here, uh, even in the midst of, of this, this topic we're on, uh, because we are friends still. There's no drama. No one's dying. No one's sick. No one hates anybody. No one's going to hate anybody. We're taking a break. They're going to hate the wine in the morning. They're going to hate the wine in the morning. <laughs> so, I haven't hated it for the past two days. I think I'm good. <laughs> what, so, I, what I'd like to ask all three of you, yeah, if yeah, I may, yeah. is <laughs> when you... When I know you, it's going to be an interview, but go ahead. When, when you've worked on something for so long and you've built up quite a following, how nervous does it make you to take a hiatus, to have to rework, do all that time, spend all that effort to rebuild it back up to where it is today. Oh, well, all ten people, we can get them back pretty quick. Don't worry about it. Oh, <laughs> then we just email them and say, Mom, Al. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tom, Amber, Tom. FJ. Yeah. Uh, we'll just, yeah, we, we can put it all in a bulk email and just, you know, fire it out. So that, that won't be a big deal at all. No, um, I don't know. I've never done it before. Yeah, but it's like any band you quit to try and restart that. To recapture what you might have had, and you well, know. yeah, you know what? That's the thing, FJ. It's a good, that's a cool question you threw in there. That's the but, difference. Go ahead, Bonnie. Go ahead. It's all you. I, 
I, I think the key thing to this one is what we have is me, Scott, and Doug. And that's not going to change. Yeah. Yeah, we're still here. Me, 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 Scott, and Doug and the camaraderie and the way we get along and get along on air, that's not ever going to change. No matter how many changes Ghostly Talk goes through, yeah. we're that's always going to remain the same. The thing about Ghostly Talk, and this is the point that you, whoever's listening or you're sitting right here, FJ, is that we do whatever the hell we want with it. And if people go away as a result of our decision tonight, fine. Fine. I don't hate them for that. I, you know, I'm not going to hold anything against anybody. I know Doug and Bonnie aren't going to hold anything against, against anybody. But you need to understand, and I'm saying this to everybody, you need to understand that we do ghostly talk for us. We do this show for us. The fact that you guys listen, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and we're in, we're indebted to you forever. It's a really good bonus, though, that we get. We used to, when Doug came to me with his idea. Uh, and said, "Let's let you want to try this thing," and Doug didn't. This was Doug's. This was Doug's baby. This is, was Doug's idea. That's another thing we should make very clear here too. Um, you know, we had no idea what we were doing here, but it was the thrill of doing something. Still don't. <laughs> Where did dildo Good go? Call. Say, yeah. Did you say dildo? Dildo. dildo. I think she said dildo. Like just randomly. <laughs> Tourette's or something? You, you, got got the, you got the toys in your mind again. Doug's got the toys. She's got the wine <laughs> in the fire. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you recover from that one? No, um, no but seriously, we do, this, we do this for us. This is our show. We do this for us. Thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate it, and we and we we look forward to having you listen to some more. But if somebody's going to take their you know stand up, throw their arms up in the air after tonight, they listen to this thing and go, wah, 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 wah. well then we don't need you, bro, brother, assistant, whatever. We don't need you. All right, you got to understand that these are real people doing this show. This isn't. I'm sorry, this isn't reality TV or whatever it is out there. We're doing. We're real people doing a real show here, and we have real lives outside of this show, and. Sometimes, you know, I, you got to step back, and you need to handle your business or whatever it may be. I'm sure we might talk about that a little bit here, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, no, we'll be back, and if nobody's listening, then fine. We'll just keep doing the show anyways. I don't really – I don't want to – That's wanna, how we've been doing it for seven and a half years. Yeah, so, yeah I, I don't really – and it, I don't. I, it's been getting much and more intense of an attitude, for me at least, lately. But really, it's about that. If you don't like the show, if you don't want to listen to the show, I don't care. It don't matter. There are a million shows out there to listen to. Doug's been saying that for years. There are a million shows out there to listen to. Go listen to something you like more. And now you don't have much of a choice because you're going to be doing shows for a while. But, but like, no, um, no, it's been for us. It's been our adventure. It, and thankfully, there's been some people that, you know, that really were interested in hearing about this adventure, you know, we call Ghostly Talk here. Um, so, you know, when we come back and start doing this show again down the road, whenever it may be, you know, we hope they'll be there because we're honored to have you here. It's really cool to have you guys listen to the show. But it's always been, I hate to sound selfish, but it's been our thing. It's about us. So, you know, I hope that answered your question. Actually. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing I want to say is, yeah, um, yeah. people that know you guys, the way you are on air, the way you react with each other and talk, it's no different than when you're off air. I mean, it, this is real. The mm -hmm. way you are on air is the way you guys are, you know, with each other, with our, your friends. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge group yeah. of friends that we've all, you know, over the last nine years that, you know, yeah. Doug, you and I met what, nine years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. And, um, and um, just the the incredible group of people that we've gotten to know through you guys, mm -hmm. because of you guys, you know. And it's, you've helped me with uh, things I've gotten into. Mm -hmm. Look at Amber, the things she's into now. Yeah, she's written a book. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was all part of the family. It was mm -hmm. uh, a family that supported each other. Yeah, and it really is. It's a family. Yeah, and and, and again. <laughs> We're, you know, it's like a friggin' eulogy around here. <laughs> no, and I, 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 but no, I, I want to keep repeating this: that ghostly talk isn't dead, yeah. and and we're still here, and you know, it's still a very living, breathing thing. Um, but it just needs to, like Tom, you said this earlier: we're not pushing the stop button; we're pushing the pause button. Re retooling you know? is the term. We're re retooling. Retooling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
stupid phones go. Here, I, I got a phone thing going here, too. Anyways. <laughs> All right, whatever. Radio 101, again. Do we want to blow through the break here, Doug, or do we want to take a break again? What do you want to do here? Cause I, think should... we, I think we should take the break because okay. I'd like to uh, come back and talk about some of the things that we've, some of the things that led to this decision and yeah. some of the things yeah. that we see going on in the field and uh, uh, things like that that, yeah. that has caused such... Um, such an interesting decision to go to go in and happen. I think that's a really good idea. Um, that, that, that's I wanted to get to that. So yeah, I think this would be a good time to break for a minute, get our heads back together again. Yeah, and I don't want to go right out of this conversation and directly into that because that that is. Uh, uh, we've had about fifty bad segues already, Doug. So what the <laughs> hell? <is> the <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. But no, let's let's do it through or after a break. All right, that's cool. We'll be uh, we'll be right back after this. For more info, visit ghostlytalk.com. 